Sir Brandon Lake, thank you for doing this bus chat with me. I'm honored. Um, I would like you to read the book of Galatians. Um. Y'all, oh my gosh, <laughs> Galatians, Galatians, Galatians and restaurant. Rest, restaurant. Yo, I don't know what a me restaurant and, is. I don't know what a restaurant. <laughs> me, me and Brenda have been going back and forth. Like, oh my gosh, restaurants, three syllables. Galatians. Yes. Galatians. No, not Galatians. There's a, it sounds like there's Galatians. an I in there. Galatians. 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 See how smooth that is. Restaurant. Restaurant. What restaurant. is that? Let's go to the restaurant. See, you're saying that's three syllables. There's you no always, way. When you say it in a sentence, you always use three syllables. But North, you... south. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it comes down to. Ooh, usually when I play, when I've played these songs for people, yeah. I've had to go in like my personal library. But now I can just it's go out for all the world to, to Apple hear. Music and look up Naomi Rain. Isn't that so nice? Okay, we're gonna do safe. Okay. Well, I think we can play the song. Okay, so just tell me what you what you really think. Okay. Unless it's bad. There's not a chance you could ever, ever produce anything that was bad. It's not, it's not possible. He's so encouraging. He's just it's like Caleb. Possible. Positive, encouraging. <laughs> Brandon <Caleb>. Lake. <laughs> <laughs> Your range is insane. You can do the highest stuff and also those little low things you got. Such a good lyric, don't shrink back. Don't you know my Yes. You are the hook queen. It's nice to listen to songs with you. <laughs> because you know, okay, you know this. You know when you're showing somebody a song yeah. and they talk? Yeah. That, for a songwriter, is like, hello, do you hate me? Yes. But it depends on the type of song. That's what I learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're talking about the song, yeah. then I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. If you're talking about what we're having for lunch, yeah. I hate I'm you. like, you're not in this at all. Yeah. Like, And you didn't just catch the best part. You literally talked over <laughs> the part I wanted you to yeah. hear. I wanted to get that reaction. Now I have, like, very few people I show a song to because I know they'll <laughs> respect that moment. And they'll, they'll really, like... They'll give me what I'm looking for. Right. Even if it's like, this could be better. That's what I want to hear, you know, before right. the song's out. And once the song's out, I'm like, then don't just, say nothing. Just give me love. <laughs> okay. Please. Because it's too late. That's what's crazy about that song is like, a lot of people would just leave it to like the end of the chorus is like the hook, but there's like eight hooks in that song. There's like a hook every, which I've actually learned about um, like pop production and mm -hmm. stuff that you have people's attention span nowadays are so. Um, so small that you actually want to introduce a new part like every few seconds something needs to and it maybe not necessarily is a new part it could be instrumentation it could yeah. be a vocal thing or changing a little bit of thing uh, and the way you sing it the second time or the third time to keep people's attention it's crazy that you said that because like the songs on this on this project are longer than what yeah. you know now these songs are like two minutes and 18 seconds but i wanted to make music that actually told a story and yeah. it's really hard to do that in such a short amount of time but i i did try like sonically and lyrically and like with parts and melodies and stuff to come up with something new so that people would want to yes. keep listening it's a journey yeah you know, take them somewhere but literally i feel like every song is a journey yeah. and so even if it doesn't fit into like like what everybody's doing today i still felt like oh but i want to be true to this process i want to be true to yeah. these moments that's the beautiful thing about that song though is like i could listen eight more times and i think because of the production of that song the melodies like like you can't catch everything in the first listen, which is awesome. I wanted you to listen to this song because I think a lot of your music and a lot of your writing is either about overcoming yeah. like fear, anxiety. And you know, we're we're like in the album thing together. Like we just we're yeah. basically dropping around like a month yeah. apart, right? Yeah. Um, That's the first thing that came out. I was like lyrically, it's like this is hitting at home for me because I've been writing a lot about overcoming fear, anxiety, depression, um, and not only because it's something that's new to me, and I've been learning to try to quickly write about something as soon as I'm experiencing it, like quickly, like get to pen and paper and express and almost find healing in offering like confession and 
and talking it out with the Lord through song, but also our world has been going through, I mean, like hell on earth, like just, it's one thing after another. I literally was spending a few moments on my phone just kind of catching up on what's going on in the world, because we're living on tour, which is like a, another world. Another world. So I was like, okay, what's happening? You know, and there's some things that scream at you, like you can't help but know that this just happened. I thought it was interesting that we were both writing about yeah. kind of the same things and I feel like God told me to do this record because people need it. I know we all went through, like globally we went through a trauma um, yeah. together and I don't think that we fully understand the implications of everything that has happened. I think we get yep. that we all went through a hard time and I think there are some people, like I'm kind of that person that's like, let's not talk about it, let's just move on right. and live. Right. It's not working. I think no. people need tools. And so when I heard your project help, I was like, oh snap. Like, I feel like this is actually what the Lord wants us to do right now. Yeah. This is so missional yep. for me. It's yeah. not just me, um, what is it? Like, it's not just cathartic, right? Like yeah. I'm just, you yeah. know, venting or, or bleeding yeah. while leading. Right. It's not that. It's like, no, I think people need to learn how to process what's going on on the inside yeah. and this is what the lord is asking for us now because yeah. you prosper as your soul prospers yes you know now. yeah i remember being in my car and you know there's a lot of like boxes i put i accidentally put myself in mm -hmm. and i remember thinking okay what's my next worship project going to be and i'm looking all through this list of songs that i had and i'm like man this one's about fear this one's about anxiety and this one's a cry out for help and this one's I'm like the majority of the songs I had were what I had been walking through and I felt so strongly from the Lord he's like put these out this is worship go back read the Psalms I, I was like thinking maybe this isn't gonna be my worship record my next worship record that's a that is a I don't know why I've, I believe it's like worship has become such a genre and then the successful songs in that genre look like one thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I go, okay, well, if I wanna help people worship, it has to look like this. And I feel like the Lord began to correct and still is. Like every night on tour, when I go to lead Fear Is Not My Future, it's a very easy song for me to think, maybe we shouldn't do this one tonight. It's hard to lead because it's, it's like, it speaks to some things like, like fear and, um, and, and sickness and declaring that that will not be my future, it won't be my story. And so it kind of feels like, at times, like that's not worship. But when you go back and read the Psalms, like that stuff is it's littered All everywhere. It. Like, and I think why it's difficult to lead sometimes is because it's bird, I mean, it's horizontal. You, Dude, like we're literally yeah. telling people, hey, get it together. Yeah. It's just like a very personal song as well. Yeah. Very declarative. It's strong. Yeah. You know, it's confidently yeah. saying like, I'm not going to be yeah. afraid. Yeah. I'm going to trust you. Even though we probably really the don't feel it. Two hours later, I'm like, dang it, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> right where I started <laughs> right it's like a crazy thing but I feel like you lead it so well and then I I think there's this space where you start talking about let the light and let the light on in and I feel like that's where people get lost in some of this stuff right where we don't actually let the light in yeah. We just like commiserate and it's like, oh, I'm sad, oh, I'm yeah. scared, oh, I'm yeah. lonely, I'm a, and we don't let the light in and like, okay, yeah. well, what does that look like? And I think that letting the light in means that you're going to begin to see things that you didn't see. 100%. The light exposes. Yeah, that's the first part. Yeah, I'm in the place now because you like just what you were saying. Like, hey, you end up like two hours later. Like, dang, I'm in the same place. I actually think that I'm I've resigned myself to stop trying to play the hero in my story. Wow. To be yeah. the da like yeah. <laughs> the damsel in distress. Yeah. Mind you, right. I'm not gonna just like live in distress, but like for other people to save me. But recognizing that, oh. My contentment is in the fact that Jesus yeah. came and yeah. died and bled and yeah. for me. He covered me. He saved me. Um, he left me the Holy Spirit and gave me and filled me with His Spirit so that I can live a life to yeah. Him. But it's not yeah. a work I'm doing. It's a work He's doing. He's going to bear fruit. Like, I'm taking, which is hard for me, I'm taking an aggressively passive role. You know how people are passive-aggressive? Right. Yeah. I'm going to be aggressively <laughs> passive. <laughs> and let God bear that fruit in me. Yeah. I think the hardest part about letting the light in for me is that, um, and I want to say this in case someone hears that and can resonate, um, I think the last person I, I, I love is myself. 
and because I'm, I'm pretty aware of my, my weaknesses, my insecurities, and the things I wrestle with, and I'm terrified that if I let the light in even more, I'm gonna like gonna uncover more. <laughs> yeah, I, it's like I remember. Oh. Uh, I, I have coped with who I am in the bad way, like the things I don't love about myself in relationships and 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 other things, where my I, I start to attach my identity to other things to make me feel better, make me feel like. Um, uh, I, you know, I can lean into that instead of thinking about, dwelling about, like, who I am alone and who I really am. And I think I did that in my younger years, and I didn't allow the Lord to really, really work on, let the light in, expose those things, and help me um, to grow and to be, become more like Jesus and to deal with it, let Him deal with those things. Um, I... I was terrified at a young age of just like being alone, especially like middle school, high school. Always had to have a girlfriend, always had to be with somebody because I hated spending time by myself. And so I think like that's a reflection of like my relationship with God. Like, um, you know, I, I haven't allowed him to 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 love me, like to love on me and to, to change me. And I'm 32 years old and I'm still having a hard time letting God really shine a light on those areas, you know? But every time I do, I really allow him to, 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 I let the light in. It's always an opportunity for for me to become more like Jesus, even when it hurts. Um, it's worth it to work through, to walk through what I need to change to be more like him. I don't know I if any this. of that made sense. It makes all the sense. I was just thinking about, you're 32, you're about to hit your Jesus year. Yeah. And I think 33 is always like crazy. It's like the year you die. The year of crucifixion. Yes, but resurrection. Oh, you know? my God. Hello? He only stayed down here for three days. Woo! Because letting the light in is so uncomfortable, a lot of times I resort to just like doing all the things right before letting the light in. Like standing at the cross and be like, okay, this is beautiful. Like, this is close enough. And I think too many of us, and, and this is myself, like, it's that's the that's the temptation for me is like, it, it's somewhat worked enough in seasons where I, I'm in worship moments or I'm in my time with God and I can, I see Him, but I don't do what He's telling me to do. It's not just seeing Him; it's obeying what He's saying. And you can get by just seeing, just him. seeing, and but knowing willing. the right thing. Yeah. And not actually doing it. Because yeah. we think that's the church thing, right? Yeah. We think that knowing what yes. he said is the same thing as doing. And Jesus is like, <laughs> Yeah, just don't don't just be hearers of the word, like be no. doers. Yeah. That yeah. thing is tearing me up right now. I'm torn. Yeah. Because if I'm honest right now, especially like while we're on tour, I don't feel like I have the energy and space right now to go through the full reno. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 100%. Like what who renovates yeah. their their yeah. kitchen the week of Thanksgiving? Like I can't. Right. We got dinner to cook exactly. in a few days. Yeah. Like I can't do this, but I think like come the new yeah. year, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, or like yeah. spring cleaning. Yeah. All right, let's do it. That's what we do. We postpone it. Yes. We postpone the life change. But is it so the bad? Transformation. I would just wonder. So yeah. here's the question is what could God do if I do the reno before I think before I gotta cook that turkey and all the things and the whole family's coming over? That's a lie we're we're believing that we can't he can't get it done before Oof. Thanksgiving. It's true. But he turned uh, Come on. He turned that water into oh, wine. Yeah. He turned them fishes and loaves. You right. Woo, he fed them all. He sure did. And I'm convicted. If I'm like, okay, God, I'm going to at least pursue that. I'm going to let you do whatever you want to and trust that um, I can still do the things you're calling me to. You completely understand. You know the weight I'm carrying. You you are the one that called me to do this. Like, surely if I open up my life even more so, you're not going to let me fall. You're not going to let me crash and burn. I'm kind of saying this for just like somebody who may be going through that and postponing the transformation like no schedule it for today and maybe it's a bite size maybe it's, maybe not, it's like, not even that big. it's not going to put something on you like there's a scripture that talks about and i know it's more about temptation but i, I have to believe that god's not going to put something on you that you that that you can't handle right with him sometimes we get so 
hell bent on being good or being yeah. right or working through it and being healthy that we're actually unhealthily looking for issues. It's like searching WebMD, yeah, yeah. you know, for what's wrong with you as soon as you get like a, a tickle, you know, on your yeah, elbow yeah. or in your throat. It's like, and now you're like looking up yeah. all of these things and like, no, that's not even, you know what I'm saying? Like you actually yeah. didn't go to the physician yeah. and figure out so they could diagnose you or, or you know, cr yeah. like examine you. Yeah. And I, if I'm honest, I can be like this. I'm like, oh, I'm sad. What's yeah. wrong? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I gotta, blah, blah, blah. You know, and, and we can kind of get in those spaces. But I think when the Lord is leading us to yeah. do the work, yeah. to make yeah. a move, to change, to adjust, I think we have to do it. We have to trust. What would our world look like if we started going, like if our relationship with God was in such a healthy place that we weren't waiting for him to be a rescuer, but he was preparing us before the storm came? Yeah. Well, Brandon, I appreciate you. I thank I you, you for listening to this. So I really love you. We can talk all day. Yeah, like we have. Really good. That's why I love coming to your <laughs> your like your green room, your area. Because every time I come in there, it's like there's always life is happening, yes. conversation. Like yes, I love it. Thank you for coming on our bus. To oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> thank you for inviting me back to my bus. <laughs> yes, I, love I love you. I'm so proud of you. Your thank record you. is absolutely stunning. It is mind blowing, it's creative, it's around the corner, it's gonna get permission for so many younger Naomi's to step into um, expressions that they didn't think was possible and break the mold and be pioneers because you were a pioneer first. So thank you, I'm honored to know you. Thank you, I'm honored to know you. Love you. I love you too.